training volume on rings versus training volume on bars. What's the difference? How can you do it? And how it reflects on training the muscles? This is the topic of my video today and I want to share some very essential uh, details with you. Now, I recently got my hands on a pair of gymnastic rings, which, by the way, fantastic tools, cheap and reliable that can last for a lifetime if you're careful with them. It can easily replace the bars without leaving be behind anything important for your body development if you know what moves to include. I made another video for this matter with my 12 essential ring exercises to help you train the muscles very effectively, so I suggest you watch that one too along with the video I do right now. You can check it out in this corner. My question, uh, because I trained majorly on bars and did high volume, was whether I could do high reps on rings as well. I saw that you wonder about this too. So how does it relate to volume and the best approach so you can make sure the muscles are getting enough stimulus? So I trained on rings on a daily basis since I bought them, switching to bars to feel the difference and so forth until I got an accurate understanding. What I did was simply to replace the dip station and pull up bar with the rings. Still, I kept all the essential exercises, no changes whatsoever, and I'm referring to compound moves such as pull-ups, dips, push-ups, leg raises and their variants, which are not too many. These exercises and their essential variants with slight modifications in grip and body positioning are all required to build a solid upper body regardless of whether you do it on bars or rings. So we all have to focus on them and try to master them eventually. Now, among all the basic exercises, the trickiest one is definitely the dip. On a dip station, I typically do sets of 15 to 20 reps, depending on the set range as well. The system here is fixed solid in the ground, so I don't have to balance that too. It comes naturally, so I don't need to coordinate and balance myself at all. And thus, all my energy and strength can be put to wrapping out and wrapping out at fast speed too, if that's what I desire. Moving to dips on gymnastic rings, the mechanics change remarkably. They might look the same, true, and as a movement pattern, they really are, but it involves a different approach. The rings also depending on how they are anchored, the length of the ropes too can get more or less stable. Less stable they are, the more you need to compensate and coordinate. Rings will also twist and rotate, and they will move around in all directions based on the center of your gravity and how you position yourself on them. So you have various moves and momentum that need compensation. Therefore, it requires a lot of coordination and balance. Things you don't need to worry about on a deep station. And this stabilization requires body strength after all, or more strength than on a deep station. That's why it's harder to wrap out. Stabilization fatigues. My hands shake to such an extent when I do ring dips because I try to both wrap out to my maximum while trying to conserve strength and energy to last longer. The hardest thing is to find a sweet spot where you can dip for more reps. Moreover, I need to get more adapted, meaning that I need to train my stabilization with time and as I go through. After all, I'm kind of a beginner here, sort of speaking. At a point, I know I'll get pretty close to my rep range as on a dip station. At the moment, and after a few weeks on training uh, ring dips, I can do sets of 10 reps. I repeat, 10 reps. So that's almost half of what I can do on a solid and stable bar station. Nonetheless, here is a small detail that I think compensates for the lesser volume. That aspect is time under tension or pressure. Let aside the stabilization and actually let's not see it as an impediment in muscle building. It's true that the more reps you can do, the better you can train and fatigue the muscles, which generates a higher hypertrophy stimulus. It's a better response. 
but at the same time, time under tension and tempo, which is the speed per rep on the concentric and eccentric move, because they are related, matter also. On a dip station, I prefer going faster and doing more reps instead of increasing the tempo for each rep. Lower the total work volume and focus more on fast concentric speed and slow eccentric speed. On rigs, on the other hand, I have no other option but to increase the tempo and time under tension. That's caused by stabilization and consequently the reason I fatigue faster and decrease the rep range. However, in muscle building, slow reps and increased time under tension is also a great stimulus. It's associated with hypertrophy. So my advice is that if you can only do sets of, let's say, 5 to 10 reps, then don't see it as an obstacle, but rather as a different approach and technique to train the muscles. Second, you can add more working sets to compensate for the volume at the end. Do that extendedly instead with more sets, as I said, and you can burn out eventually, trust me. Therefore, the answer is yes, you can effectively train the muscles on rings and do volume, as I said, if you understand the mechanics and what to do without ever training on bars. It goes the other way around as well. Muscle soreness is always a good sign, especially for bodybuilders, so let's uh, use it likewise. Every time I did dips on rings, my chest and triceps felt sore the days after. But dips were not the only one responsible, of course, I also added a few more ring push-up variants like flies and a sort of regular push-ups, only this time I had to adduct my hands close together to name it a full correct rep. Flies involve a different approach, you, you can't rep out but it's an exercise I highly recommend. Fewer reps, steady and slow execution, and you will like the sensation they offer after. The regular push-ups require stabilization a little bit, but I can honestly rep out sets of 15, even 20 if I'm rested, although there is an adduction involved too, and more time under tension as well. The best advice I can give is to make the increased tempo and time under tension your ally. Let them be strong points and not weak weaknesses. I also suggest you do bar training and on the soil as well. I'm all about ring work as I'm all about bar work. Separate se sessions or combined under one and single routine, it doesn't matter. It's a preference and also depends on how much time available you have for a workout. I have a workout where I did combine ring uh, work with weighted calisthenics and also push-ups on a slam ball. You can check it out if you want, it's here in the corner. But please modify it and add more bar body weight exercises if you will. Now, leg raises and their variations. Honestly, I think it's more freedom on rings and the shoulders feel better if I do leg raises and variations on rings instead of a pull-up bar. Because with leg raises, you are underneath the rings and not above as with dips. It doesn't require that much stabilization other than controlling your own movement. That means you can wrap out as when you grab and do leg raises on a pull-up bar. I felt no difference with these exercises other than more freedom in favor of rings. Now with this chapter closed, let's move to pull-ups and their variants. Almost the same here, it doesn't require too much stabilization. However, there is an increased time under tension and a higher tempo than when you do pull-ups on the bar. That happens because you need a bit to coordinate, but also because you may twist and rotate the rings throughout the execution, on both concentric and eccentric parts. Now, I don't say you should always rotate the rings when you do pull-ups, as you can hold them tight and just wrap out. Yet, if you're training on rings, you have more to gain than to lose by rotating them. You activate more muscles with every rep. Simple. But I do recommend also bar training. As for dips, you can do pull-ups on rings and a bar in the same routine. It's again a preference once you can choose from both options. Here I'd like to add a white bullet to the rings. You can genuinely perform absolutely every pull-up variation that exists. Lower the height of the ring and you can 
and you can do body rows, horizontal pull-ups, Australians, whatever the name, etc. Then you can place one higher and one lower and you can train for one arm pull-ups and chin-ups or do variations like assisted one arm pull-ups or using one ring only to do uneven pull-ups. It's harder to do these exercises on a bar because it requires a towel or harder, sort of saying it's more complicated because it requires more tools like that towel. But you get my point. Now let's talk some numbers. I usually like doing sets of 10 when I work on a pull-up bar, regardless of the grip. For the reason I like to twist and rotate the rings, I get more time under tension, a slightly increased intensity or difficulty, and more muscle activation, but also slightly more powerful contraction. This lowers the rep range with one or two pull-ups per set. That's what I figured out. I feel like seven pull-ups on rings feel like 10 on the bar, practically speaking. Again, I can do more sets, but honestly, I'm pleased to work between 6 to 10 reps. It's the same rule of thumb. The rep range reduces a little, but you can compensate with muscle activation, powerful contractions, time under tension and tempo. So no worries about whether pull-ups on rings will stimulate the muscles to grow. Work consistently and you'll be pleased with the results. For everyone who trains with my workout programs, apply these principles if you switch from bars to rings. So I hope I clarified some aspects here, let me know your thoughts uh, below. And a share would be of great value. Subscribe if you're new and want to learn more, and I invite you to watch my other education and workout videos. Talk to you the next time, have a great day, salute.